Thank you and uh, it's an honor and privilege to be speaking to this uh, galaxy of uh, experts, entrepreneurs, startups, engineers who are working in the field of cutting edge technology and to, to, to kind of signify the name of this summit, to bringing in convergence across sectors. And the way technology is evolving these days, today, in the present times, we see technology is not something, especially AI and IT, is not something that's limited to the domain of computers, laptops, mobiles only. Convergence is the theme and it's good that you are bringing together all, of course, in the, on the umbrella theme of smart cities and urban mobility. But AI and technology today cuts across almost all sectors. Lately, AI has become a big buzz. Rightly so, because we are so used to using it and so getting dependent on it. Even though AI has been as a technology been around for a very, very long time, the term was first coined way back in 1956. But lately, the AI movement, the productization of AI, when everyone started using AI in their lives, came in a way in November 22, when uh, OpenAI launched, launched ChatGPT. And most people started using it, were amazed at the capability of its ability to create content, write poems, create stories, answer queries, that it very often, very soon, very quickly became a fad. We have uh, models from uh, ChatGPT, they have come out with O1, they have come out with O3. We have Gemini, we have Claude, we have uh, Indian companies building models. So what has happened is that it has kind of revolutionized the way we access technology. We are using AI in doing uh, a lot of our work, uh, resulting in enhancing productivity at all levels. It's helping us do our jobs easily, it's helping us do our job better. So when we analyze that, we realize that our key strength in the field of technology, in the field of AI, lies in talent, lies in the ability of our engineers to build solutions for many of these companies. And not only the not only artificial intelligence, India has for long known as the tech garage of the world. Our engineers are part of almost all global companies which are doing cutting edge research. Many of them are leading, some of the companies are even led by people of Indian origin. Many of our Indian companies, whether it's TCS, Infosys, Wipro, uh, Tech Mahindra, all of them are building tech products for many global companies. Many financial systems, banks, transportation systems, they all are run by products built by Indian companies. So we do have a strong strength when it comes to technology and AI. In fact, the Stanford AI Index 2024 rates India as the number one country in AI skill penetration. So that will help those who are wanting to build AI applications get access to AI compute and build those solutions. The second key pillar of course was with regard to data sets. How do we make data sets available? Because data sets is core to building any AI application. If you are building an AI application or a model in healthcare or agriculture or skilling or manufacturing, one would need data sets relevant to that sector. So we have built, in fact our minister launched on the 6th of March, India data sets platform branded as AI Kosh, which will be a repository of Indian data sets, which will have tools, which will have uh, uh, tools like anonymization tools, privacy preservation tools, checking for algorithmic bias, and it will also have models. So at one place, those who are wanting to build AI application solutions can get access to this entire spectrum of data sets and tools and models. And what I would do is I'll just conclude with our approach, our expectations, we are looking at where AI will take us tomorrow. So while, while we build all these applications, ultimately we have to think of that AI has to work for social good, AI has to work for improving lives of people, AI has to work for solving societal problems. So my ask from many of the entrepreneurs who are building this solution is to build a voice enabled LLM for India. Like the whole world has built text enabled uh, chat GPTs and which you type and you get a response. But for Indians, for a farmer living in a remote location, uh, he might want to know which is the what fertilizer to use or what pesticide to use or where to sell his crop. But he might not be comfortable going to a browser, entering data or downloading an app or navigating a captcha. He will be more comfortable in giving a voice command. 
and you would want the reply back on voice. I am sure by the end of the year we'll have a similar solution, and then only we'll be able to say that yes, we not only have the talent but we also have the technology and with which we'll be able to to compete with the best in the world. So thank you for having me over. It was good to share, and maybe I will be benefited by the outcomes and by the other deliberations from the experts with regard to what more the government needs to do in order to kind of further fuel this ecosystem. Thank you once again.